Welcome to Around Town, featuring what's going on here in the Greater Concord area. I am your host, Dick Patton, and it's a pleasure to welcome you back. As now we're in the month of November, and as I've stated before, thank goodness the elections are gone. No more politics for a while, I hope. But anyhow, we're now getting ready for the festive holiday season, and uh, within a matter of weeks, we'll be watching Macy's Parade and celebrating Thanksgiving. Of course, Veteran Days come in there also, and then after that, it's Christmas I'm getting ready for. But today, I've got some special guests on, and one of them is Clara Brogan. And, of course, she has been pretty popular lately in the newspapers. If you've read it, she was in the inside lately. Well, now, she was one, let's see now, one of the fascinating people or something at CCTV had her on. Yes, yes. Yeah. And earlier this year, she was a champion for children yeah. in the school district. Yeah. And, yeah, and then we gave her, she presented her, we presented her at Concord Grange, Grange. for Citizen of the Year Award. Yes. So, you've had quite a year there, I'm yes, I I tell you, and all of what? She's what, 90... She'll be, yes. 92 years old. She'll be 93 old. next oh, month. next month, really? December? Yes, New Year's Eve. New, my, my goodness yes. gracious, New Year's Eve. <laughs> Isn't that a good birthday? Well, yeah, I'd say so. It was Guy Lombardo playing those days, I wonder? Uh, yeah. Everybody celebrates. Yeah, I yeah. guess they do, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's quite a birthday for you, so... Yeah, I was reading what Paul had sent to me there, and uh, the Texas native was born in La the last college in Leavenworth, Kansas, and later attended the world famous Julianne. Oh, yeah, I think you got to came out here a little bit wrong, but that's okay. Married her husband Edward at New York St. Patrick's Cathedral in October in New Hampshire. They were married for 63 years. Wow. After moving to Concord, you taught school for several years until she began taught 35 students each week. Wow, that's quite a classroom. Now, those were the <clears throat> students that she taught at home piano lessons. Oh, really? Yes, okay. yes, that she did for quite oh, a few goodness. years, yes. That's one instrument I wish I could learn how to play in a way. Mm -hmm. I played the accordion, and they always said if you play the accordion, you can play the piano like nothing. Well, I, can, I couldn't do it. I couldn't figure it out. Really? But yeah. you could have been on the Lawrence Welk show. Oh, yeah, with Myron Florin. Yes. Yeah, well, Lawrence himself. <laughs> in the late 50s, Clara and Ed Brogan opened the Lone Star Dairy Bar on Loudon Road. And then you said returned to teaching in the school at Merrimack Valley High in 1968 and teaching school music in several other schools one day a week and then taught at Garrison, Conant, Concord High, and who knows whatever else. Yes, goes. exactly. <laughs> What, what did, no, at Concord High, what year were you at Concord High, Clara? I, I was in the music department. So you were with Dick, uh, Richard Galuso, maybe? Or who was no, up there then? No, I followed Dick Galuso. Really? It, I was there. Uh, he had retired, and his slot yeah. at the music department was open, and I applied and received it. Wow, goodness. But you didn't do the marching band, though, did you? No, no, no. There was a band director. Okay, yeah. Because didn't Andrea Manis, wasn't she up there too teaching, working with the students, or was that Runlet? She, she was, was at, at Runlet. the Runlet. middle school. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. well, we worked together with the players, <clears throat> yeah. Andrea and I, but yeah. not. She had her classes, and I had sure. mine at the high sure. school. Would you want to go back teaching school now, though, the high school, the way things are? Well, I don't think I have the energy that would be oh, needed for I wouldn't. I know that. Even going back to school, <laughs> I wouldn't have the energy. You know, when I think of the days when we were at Concord High or Runlet or even over here at Dame School, it was, it's so changed from today. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I had a two classes of second grade today for, I tell stories. Yep. And uh, they're just such wonderful listeners that it's a great pleasure to me. Yeah, that, that age area from kindergarten through say third grade is a, good, is a good time I think. Once they get into sixth and seventh grade, boy, forget it. <laughs> and, I, and I've always thought too, when they changed, when Concord changed and put the sixth graders up there where the junior high or the old junior high grades were, I thought that was a bit 
early sometimes. Mm -hmm. I know they were talking about putting the fifth grade in there too, but I'm glad they didn't. Mm -hmm. But um, it's just life has changed. I mean, when I was in first grade or kindergarten, we of us didn't have computers back then. We had the chalkboard or we had, well, in kindergarten we did uh, games and we would learn the alphabet, of course, and, mm -hmm. you know, we, I had, I had Miss Silsby, but she would, um, you know, and then we had half a day with kindergarten. We'd either go in the morning or the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then first grade, you know, was that new style to learn a little bit more, get some books to, you know, books to read through, but mm -hmm. second grade, but, you know, it really wasn't until you get up in the fifth and sixth grades that then you started to get a little more going there, but yeah, I don't know. School has just changed so it has. much. It has. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we just got done our state range convention there uh, almost not quite two weeks ago now, and we were so happy that you know we're sad that you couldn't make it up there, but it was a crazy <laughs> schedule. I went to we were in West Lebanon, and but anyhow, we announced the winners of all our con not contests, but our awards we had. And this one here, you know, I was this, this plaque was smaller than I thought it was going to be. They weren't somehow somebody got them mixed up, and so anyway. But you're being honored by the State Grange now as the Citizen of the Year for, oh, the, how for nice. the New Hampshire State Grange. Oh, isn't that nice? Yep. So you. Well, were, thank you very you much. Honored. Well, we I read off your profile up there and they all agreed they couldn't believe it lady your age doing all that stuff and continue to continue to do it you know so we're very pleased and sorry you missed it missed. we're hoping to come back to Concord this next year but right now there's a conflict with one of the hotels down here so but no you earned it you really well, did thank you very much well I think yeah. she's a great inspiration that you don't have to at 65, stop doing things mm. and just, you know. Oh, I know. Uh, and, I, and I think it's important because people have something to contribute, whatever age, and it's important that you Well, did you that. see on TV the lady in Utah? Mm. She was work. she's working at a Macy's, but it wasn't the one, the big famous Macy's, but it's a store out there, the Pine Grocery Store. Mm. She's a bagger. Mm-hmm. And I guess she stocked shelves, I don't know, but she was, they were showing her on TV last night, 85 years old. Mm -hmm. And she, they just, oh, she's faster than most of the younger ones are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, having quite a time. It just shows that sometimes, you know, we dismiss our elderly and they've mm -hmm. still got a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's what upsets me is that, you know, look at, look at the wealth of knowledge you've got, Clara. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've mm -hmm. lived through some of the roughest times in our in, in your life. I mean, you faced well, the, the depression in the 30s or the yes. 20s there. Uh, you had well, three or four presidents that were assassinated there. Was it Garfield was one, wasn't it? No, he was before her. Okay. <laughs> I think Woodrow Wilson. The Wilf's only one I remember hmm? is uh, Franklin Delano. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Roosevelt. oh, okay, yep. But then you think, of course, we had Kennedy and then mm -hmm. was Eisenhower and all those. Truman. Truman, and yeah. On and on from there. Yeah. And then the famous Nixon Kennedy debates, not like they were this year, were ah. with these. Ah. Ah. You, must, you must look back at politics and must laugh at some of the stuff that's going on today. Well, you know? I would laugh if I felt, but I sort of feel like that they're not taking our political and social problems and answering no. to them as to what they would do to help. Yeah. A little bit on the health care, a little bit on yeah. uh, the seasons and the climate change <clears throat> and all that. Yeah. But mostly it's insulting each other. Oh, I know. Oh yeah, for him to stand there, you're a liar. Mm -hmm. The first thing I'm going to do when I get president, I'm going to hire a uh, prosecutor and he's going to put you in jail. Mm -hmm. What the heck are we telling our mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. to see that stuff? Mm -hmm. There's no civility. No, no, it's no. terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, I would never think of getting on there. I mean, what, what am I, why aren't you stressing your positives? Mm -hmm. 
not what you're going to do, you know, get on mm-hmm. I'm going to put you in jail, and oh, the Clintons are nothing but a bunch of liars, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm sure your family's got some skeletons in your closet too. But mm-hmm. you know, it's like, hey, I just, I, I, I'm just myself. I am so tired of watching the news, reading the newspaper, or listening to the radio, and it's all you hear. Well, yeah. we've oh. only got about a five or six more days. Thank of this. goodness. Oh Sweet. my gosh. Mm-hmm. Then I hope they all go to church and get asked for <laughs> confession. Because, oh, the way they've acted. Mm-hmm. It's been terrible. Well, you know? but, I think that they no longer show respect for each other. No, they don't. No. Mm-hmm. No, they don't. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, and, and bringing up uh, another president's past and what he did and all. What, what are you crazy? What's the matter with you? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, he's not in. But no. I don't know. It's no. just, and it, it's just really crazy. But no know? child is going to say now, "I no. want to grow up and become president." No, I know. It I used wouldn't. to be something children would aspire to. You know, yeah, some. I know. But nobody wants to, you know, involve themselves in that kind of arena. When I be when I was a kid, all I could think of when I when I grew up, I wanted to see. I wanted to be a school teacher once. I said that in sixth mm-hmm. grade. Or I wanted to be a uh, um, police officer, maybe. Mm-hmm. Or I wanted to be a radio personality. Mm-hmm. Not sure what, which one. But I ended up being a police dispatcher as I was. So I guess I fulfilled that That one. part of it, yes. But, you know, it's just amazing. I didn't know what I wanted to be back mm-hmm. in those days, mm-hmm. you know? Well, back then, teachers were a really respected profession. Oh, yes. oh, and they yes. were respected by, yeah. you know. But even that is changed, you know, and they have to be very careful what they say and do. And there were two teachers. I, Paul and I talked about this because I don't think he had, they were on the down your end. But Teresa Downing. Uh, oh yes, I saw her in church. Yes. Really, she is still is she still out there? Really, she was my third grade teacher at Dame School, <clears throat> and um, then it was Althea Sanderson. Or then she remarried and became Althea Westover. Mm-hmm. Well, the two of them would stand at the end of the hall because their rooms are right together. And if you didn't, if you walked by them and didn't say "excuse me" or "pardon me," they pulled you right out of line <laughs> and told you mm-hmm. and made you stand there until everybody had gone, and then you mm-hmm. got the Dickens. But yes, oh yeah, they would stand there because they always wore high heels back then. Oh, yes. And Sanderson or Westover, she was really tall. And she had quite a temper. And we always hoped when we got to second grade, we wouldn't get her. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, yeah, Miss, I had Miss Downing for third grade. And uh, mm-hmm. her sister, though, Ellen, I think, died recently or something. She taught, yes. didn't she teach piano or something? Yes. She was a music teacher. That's what yeah. I thought, yeah. And she married Ozzie Waite. Scrooge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I used to hate to go in to see him because when the JCs, when I get became a JC, the first few years that we did the Christmas parade, I was on that committee. We would go into the different merchants asking for a donation, and oh boy, I hated to go in to see him. Oh, he was not very cordial, and <laughs> but. Anyhow, but that's it was it was interesting though, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I don't know. I, my hats off the teachers because not only today do they have to attend to the students and mm-hmm. their their attitudes, but you've got these people that walk in classes with guns and knives and you know they've got to be also a protector mm-hmm. of the students. Mm-hmm. You know, God forbid if somebody walked in there and. Boom, 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 or whatever. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. And it was bad enough when I was a kid to have bullies in school. Because mm-hmm. I was bullied and it was awful. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, heaven yes. forbid. Mm-hmm. So, yes. I, I don't know. But no, Clara, you, I'm sure, <laughs> have seen some big <laughs> things during your life. I mean, you, you could write a book like he did. <laughs> you know, I, would be, I, I bet it would be interesting, <laughs> Paul. You would help, me, help your mother do it. Because I'm sure it would be the memoirs of Clara mm-hmm. Brogan, and I'm telling you, it's, mm-hmm. it'd be interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, 
I think back on many things, and I grew up in a wild Texas town. Whereabouts in Texas? For the name of the town was Pampa. Really? And it's about 60 miles east of the big city, Amarillo, oh. the northern panhandle oh, really? of the state. Now, there's something funny I gotta tell you. This all shows how stupid I can be. I never knew what panhandle meant because they'd always say the Florida panhandle or the Texas panhandle or the or Idaho Oklahoma. pan, oh, you know, Oklahoma pan. Mm -hmm. What do they mean? Mm -hmm. then, I, then someone told me, well, because it looks like a frying pan or a pan or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I know what they're saying when they see that thin, then for the rest of it. Yes. See, mm -hmm. I didn't know. Nobody, <laughs> nobody explained it to me. Well, the panhandle. But you were down in Texas. But I guess if you live there, you would know oh, yeah. that. But I don't remember in geography here, people, they would say, this is the state of Texas, or this is, you know, the state of Oklahoma. But nobody yeah. specifically said, and this part is known as, as Panhandle. Panhandle. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. Florida, same with Florida. I never mm -hmm. knew that was. Mm -hmm. Because we got Idaho, Texas, Oklahoma, Florida. I don't think there's any other ones that have that Not that I, I that I would know. Call, but no. I don't yeah. think of any, but yeah. Mm. But I don't. I just you know it, it's interesting. But I know my grandparents. My grandfather would say many times when I was a kid. He'd say, you know, I've lived the best years of our, of our, of our lives now, because that was back in the '60s. <clears throat> he he died mm -hmm. in '66. He was 81. But he said, even though we had rough times, we had the best times because we were a family and we did family things together. And he said, we did, you didn't have all this. And of course, back then, there still wasn't what's going on today. But every Sunday was either church, Sunday dinner with the family. Then you'd go for a ride to some, either visit other family members or, you know, you go see something <laughs> touristy maybe, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, but now, the the place you go is up to off to the Walmart or go to the mall or something. You, you don't you don't do much as family anymore. No, no. You know it's really people aren't connected. No, it's sad. Mm -hmm. And um, you know my mother I, and I've told this story many times about Christmas Eve. They you know they, it was during the Depression years or whatever and. They, my grandfather was out of work, my grandmother didn't work, they did have chickens, they sold eggs and things, but, you know, they didn't have much money. And Christmas Eve come, they had no gifts for the kids, they didn't have much food in the house, but, they, but somebody came to their door, and I, it was the Salvation Army, but they had, they brought them gifts, they had food, they said it was the best Christmas they ever had. Mm -hmm. And that's why my mother said the day before she died, always before she died, she said, I'll always give to the Salvation Army because they never, they always helped us out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's true. Mm -hmm. But today, you know, if you don't spend, well, they've already started black market. Isn't that mm -hmm. crazy? Mm -hmm. But if you don't spend uh, hundreds and yeah, hundreds, hundreds of, of dollars, dollars, you got nothing. Right. You know, and and the wish list that kids have. Mm. I can remember we'd go up to my grandmother's farm, my other grandmother, and of course us kids would sit there and look at the, the, uh, the, uh, the Christmas books that uh, Montgomery Ward pulled out, or Sears, or Spiegel, mm -hmm. at those mm -hmm. when they were in business. And uh, we'd sit there and make a wish list of uh, the toys that we saw. Nowadays, you don't see that stuff at all. No. no. Yeah. All you see is electronics and mm -hmm. snowmobiles and whatever else. <laughs> and, you know, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well. What would you do if you, if you could turn the clock back, we'll say, 70 years? Let's go back to maybe when you were 20 or something. What would you do differently? Anything different with your life that you could think of now? Well, I really can't think of any. I th uh, October the 7th of this year mm -hmm. would have been my 70th wedding anniversary. Wow, is that amazing? And I left Texas 
and came to Massachusetts because that's where Edward lived mm. at the time. Yeah, yeah. And lived there for two years and then we moved up here. Mm. And uh, I liked New Hampshire. It was more like where I had been because sure. Cambridge was a big city as oh, far as I was sure. concerned. Yeah. Yeah. And if I could go back, I'd go back to a small town, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I've always said myself, Concord is as big as a town a city I'd want to live in. I could never stand Manchester or Nashua or Boston or New York or any of those big cities. Mm -hmm. I couldn't take them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nice to visit. Nice to maybe ride through and see the, I mean, we always used to go down to Manchester during the holiday season to see the Christmas decorations. They mm -hmm. always were better than Concord. Well, they were draped across oh, the yeah, street. Oh, yeah, yeah. Elm street. Beautiful. And, and that, you had... That nativity scene yes. down there was huge. Mm -hmm. Like the one down in Boston Common. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it's still big, but it's, it's very short now. It's mm -hmm. on the, uh, well, it was on the grass by that moat my hotel. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have as many figurines like they did years ago. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's like it's changed. And uh, But we used to go through and see them. And mm -hmm. once in a while we'd go to Boston. But no way would I ever want to live down there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but life has changed. It's really well, changed. Well, you know, I can remember that when the children were younger, <clears throat> We would want to do something with them in That's Boston. Right. Yeah. I mean, if it was to go on the uh, boats, you know, yeah. the swan boats. Swan boats. Yeah, yeah. And they loved that. Mm. And we'd go down, and almost every year for mm -hmm. about five years, I think, we went down for the swan boats. Sure. Mm -hmm. And there isn't anything any closer, but to go to Boston now is to find a place to put the car. Mm. Oh, I know. And it's and so expensive, a oh. hurricane. Everything is so expensive. Yep. The food, the parking, the everything. It is. Yeah, it, it means is. that you've got to spend a lot of money <clears throat> just to enjoy something. Was he a devil when he was a kid? No. He wasn't? You mean he was a good boy? Well, well not that's all the time, but, but most yeah. of the time. Most of the time, yes, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Is that because he went to a Catholic school? <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I think we had a happy home and he was happy in his own. Yeah, that's good. And he had his friends, and sure. they were in, and his sister and her friends. And, hmm. and I think I told you one time that we used to sometimes go down to Manchester on the train when we were little. My really? Would take oh. Us down oh, my goodness. On the, we went on the last steam locomotive going down to Manchester mm -hmm. before they converted to the Bud Liners. Mm. And we were on, and we went down. And, well, wow. Ed that. would be out of town that night. Yeah. That Thursday we would make our holiday. Yeah. And I'd wheel a carriage with Nancy and Paul would help. And we just they loved that depot. Oh, they I just know. loved it. Oh. Mm. Mm. They'd run up and down those stairs. Mm -hmm. It makes you sick to think that it's been torn down and everything yes. else. It's yes. disgusting. Oh, it was just, because it was unlike anything else in Concord. It was well, just Well, and the hot dog man was had his stand outside, mm -hmm. and that was our treat. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well. And, but that's not available any longer. No, I know it. Well, it's not so much like it here. Friday night was a treat to go up to uh, Pleasant Street there and have a steamed hot dog at uh, Star Hot Dog. Star Hot Dog. Mm -hmm. Glass of root beer, glass of soda. Mm -hmm. Thought that was a big deal. My mm -hmm. gosh, now it's like people would turn their nose up at a steamed hot dog. <laughs> Not me, I like them. But uh, life has changed, definitely has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. you know? yes. and, uh, but it's just a big tribute to you that you're still contributing today 
when most people are just saying, I don't want to be bothered and just sit in a chair and <laughs> watch TV or whatever, you know, and here you are still going at it, you know, your well, battery is still booming there and you're not <laughs> dead yet, so that's good. Well, I enjoy what I do and think that the children do, so. Yeah, I know I have a ball with him when he's on and we, <laughs> we sit and talk like, well, I won't say it, but anyway, we sit and talk <laughs> and, uh, but we, it just, it's good because, you know, people today just don't appreciate the history or mm -hmm. what's happened in an area. They just, pss, what, they just come and go and if you can't do nothing for me, then I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. What can you do for me? Mm -hmm. That's what they want. So. Well, the world has changed a great deal for me. Yeah. And uh, I have to look at it where I am now. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you yeah. do. Mm. Yeah. But now, who? Now, out of curiosity, did now when you were here in the early years, there was always Newberries on Main Street, right? Woolworths, Kresge's. Kresge's. Was it Mohegan's Market? Yes, yeah. there was. I heard about them. Yeah. Because and you lived on South Spring Street. Right? Yes. And so you could walk, because you had to walk. Yeah. To, uh, we only had one car, and he was using it to work. Sure, sure. Uh, but Mohican would, from early spring to early fall, would have lobsters for 49 cents. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, of course, they were only three quarters of a yeah, pound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there were just so many. Yeah, yeah. You had to be there around sure. two thirty, three o'clock, no later. Yeah. Or you didn't get any. Really. And I would go and stand in line and get my lobster for yeah, forty nine yeah. cents. Sure, I don't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I'd have to go with four dollars and ninety five cents. Oh gosh, yes, at least. Or more. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now was he born in New Hampshire? Yes. He was. Was it at the Memorial Hospital or the Margaret Pillsbury? Well, both of my children are adopted. Oh, okay. And oh, he yeah. was born in... Portsmouth. 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 Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. was. And that city's gotten bigger and bigger, too. Well, I it's love, lost all uh, of the charm. Oh, I know. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's gone. It's, yeah. It, it was yeah. really a fascinating place, and, and, it, and it isn't anymore. It's you haven't been there in a long time. It's really uh, the new developments have just made oh, the downtown yeah. lose all of that quaintness and everything that it. That well, it we're had. coming to a close of the show. Can you believe it? One, no. There's my there's my signal. Yeah, he his signal's muted today. But that's bla flashing hmm. zero zero. So, but. It has been an honor to have you on, Clara, and to present you with that award. And uh, thank you so I much. I wish you many more years of good health and continue to tell our young people stories and to make their life much better. So, well, thank you very much for the award and keep and him the in line. State Grange. Yeah. So the whole state. I'm yes, a... that's right. <laughs> yep, yeah, you are. So. With that in mind, we wish to say thank you to everyone and um, looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank you to Ian and I'm your host, Dick Patton. Have a great day, great Thanksgiving.